Hey guys, now we are going to talk about how to transfer what you have highlighted to actual note cards. Um, we put our information on note cards so that we can move it around easily and decide where we're gonna put it in our paper. So the first thing we need to look at is page six in your research packet. Page six is um, a page that walks you through how, what a note card should look like. Um, so a note, there's a method to note carding. You put your source number up here in the top right you put your page number here, but we only do page numbers for books. So if it's an article that you printed, whether it be off the internet or off of a database, you do not do page number. Page number is only for books. And then the important information goes here. Now, we like to put our main point up here in the top right when we write a note card so that we know where that information is gonna go in our paper. Now granted, you don't always know that, but I would say 90% of the time you know exactly where that information is gonna go. So what, let's go ahead and take a look at the article that we've already highlighted and work on putting it into note cards. So right now, so right now I know I'm in source two. So at the top of my note card, I'm gonna write a two right up there. There's no page number because I printed it, so I don't put anything in the page number category. Um, and here's where I highlighted earlier, where Miss Crane highlighted earlier. So we know we're in main point A. So I write A up there. It says the U.S. government interned 120,000 of its own citizens and legal immigrants of Japanese descent. So I'm going to make a bullet. We're all used to bulleting. And we're going to say there were 120,000 interred. Interned. And I might put a note for myself there, like put in camps. I figured that out from context clues in the article, Japanese internment camps. So they're putting them there. Um, and it says that these were their own citizens. So these were their own U.S. citizens and, and immigrants that were legal. Notice I'm paraphrasing as I go. Not unless something looks absolutely amazing and I want to direct quote it word for word, do I need to write it in a direct quote. Look at that. That is one note card done. They both have to do with main point A and they both have to do with being put in internment camps. So one down. I look to my next sentence. Right off, I put that it's main point A because I've already identified that and it's from source two. People were forced to sell, give away, or abandon their belongings, including cars, houses, farms, and businesses. So... When they say people, I know because I've read all of my article that we're talking about the Japanese. So the Japanese were forced to sell oops, slash uh, give away um, cars, homes, land. I'm going to write land instead of farms because I'm paraphrasing for myself and businesses. And um, many had to abandon, abandon what they owned. It said they, in the article it said abandon their belongings, but I'm gonna put abandon what they owned so that I'm paraphrasing as I go. There we go. I have another note card. Now th notice the two points I put on this note card have to do with the same thing. When I organize my note cards, if I'm gonna put more than one piece of information on a note card, I make sure it has to do with the exact same topic. So there I am with that one. I have two note cards done already. Uh, the next thing I would do is just move right next to the next sentence where it talks about no apologies were given and it talks about um, several decades later Congress finally apologized. So this next one of course comes from main point C which we determined earlier and I'm still in source two. And this next one says that um, U.S. government offered no apology. U.S. government didn't apologize. And then it says, it wasn't until four decades later that Congress officially apologized. Oh, so I need to go back. The U.S. government didn't apologize immediately. So they didn't, they didn't um, apologize when it happened, but they did apologize when? Four decades later. So four decades, which is how long? Do the math in your head. Forty years later, Congress says, sorry and made reparations, and by now, I have been a good little student and looked that word up, so I know that it's payments for something that they did to them. So they made reparations of $20,000 to each survivor. So 40 years later, Congress said sorry and paid each victim of these camps 
$20,000. Now those two both have to do with Congress trying to fix the mistake they made, so they go on the same note card. So that is how we do note carding. Let's take a look next at how to use a book. Okay guys, time to look at taking notes from a book. A book is different than taking notes from a source that I've printed because I can highlight all over a source that I've printed. I can underline, I can annotate it however I want. Whereas for this situation, you guys can't go make copies out of the books you have. You've gotta use them as they are without kind of drawing all over them. So what I've done is I've already taken this book. I've used my table of contents to find a chapter that works for me. I've skimmed through that area. I found exactly what I want in here. I'm ready to take notes. Now, this is source eight. If you remember, uh, when Mrs. Crane identified her three main points and numbered all of her sources, she wrote her books down here. So we have book, source eight, Japanese American internment camps. Here it is. So when I write, take notes from this, I'm going to be referring to it as source eight. I'm also going to be including the page number because we include the page number if we're talking about a book. So if we're taking notes from a book. So that's definitely something I'm gonna be doing. So I'm ready to take notes from this book. I've got it right out here in front of me. I know where I wanna be. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the source number up on the top right for source eight. And I'm on page 39, right up here. And then I'm gonna read. Newspaper headlines blared, Japs given evacuation orders here. Okay, I'm not gonna lie guys, I want to copy that exactly as it's written in the book. I, I want to copy that headline exactly like it was in the newspapers. I wanna direct quote that. So I'm gonna put it in quotes on my paper. Notice I put it in quotes so that I know I copied it word for word. So that's my headline. I'm just gonna write these were newspaper headlines. That is probably something I'm gonna to wanna to direct quote in my book, which so I definitely, definitely am glad I have that page number right there. Um, also, I can now decide where I want to put this as a main point, and I think I'm gonna put it in B, in what and where the camps were, the impact ca camps have. Because obviously reading that headline in a newspaper would have an impact on a Japanese citizen. So um, there we go, I've got that one. The next line says, actually they were given little instruction. So that goes, same idea, goes with it. Um, Instead of actually, I'm gonna say in reality, they weren't told much about what to do. I'm just putting that in my own words so that I'm paraphrasing as I go. Okay, there we go, one solid note card from the book. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make another one. I'm still in source eight, which is my book. I still happen to be on page 39. And this one says, they had to meet at a central point, such as a bus station, within 10 days. So, now I'm gonna create an abbreviation for myself. As you're taking note cards, you're probably gonna create abbreviations for yourself. Right now, I'm gonna create one that looks like this, J slash A. This is how I'm gonna write Japanese Americans as I'm writing on my note cards. Because I don't know about you, but Japanese Americans is a lot of information to write out. That's just a lot of writing. So I'm gonna abbreviate it for myself, J slash A, Japanese Americans. Um, they were told to meet within 10 days at a central location. And then it says, such as a bus station. So I'll put example, bus station. Now I'm gonna put that one also in main point B. Now guys, I can change my mind later. What if later on I decide that really wanted to go in A? That's okay, this is my paper. Later on I can go, nope, never mind, not B, A. <laughs> but for right now, I think I'm putting it in B. So I'm gonna put a B on it. I can move that around later. So guys, that is how we take notes from a book. Just remember that I, I can't tell you a time I've ever put more than two bullets per note card. Um, you don't wanna put a lot of information per note card because later on you might wanna separate this information out and I have actually seen kids have to get scissors and cut their note card apart and relabel them and that is a huge hassle. So most of my note cards look like this one. There is one fact per note card. The only reason that I would put two facts per note card is if they are directly related to each other and I am very confident I'm going to use, I'm going to use them right next to each other in my paper. So um, I would say 90% of the time, you've got one fact per note card. I know this seems like, oh my gosh, Ms. Berger, I'm gonna use a ton of note cards. Yeah, 
Yar. <laughs> That's how research projects go. You do. You go through a lot of note cards. So um, I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope you can do some note cutting now. And I want you to look really quick before we go at how my setup is in front of me. This is what real research note cutting looks like. You have your three main points out in front of you the whole time. You have your example for what you want your note cards to look like. Until you get this down pat in your head, you have it right in front of you. You have your source, you have your note cards, you have your next blank note cards you're gonna be using. There's a whole setup here. It absolutely does take space, and you want to have everything you need within arm's reach. I've got my highlighter, I've got my pencil, I've got everything I need right here, because that is how you set down to focus on a task. You have everything you need within your reach. So I highly recommend you set yourself up in a situation like this, so that you have everything you need and you can really focus and get it done.